Good evening. I'm Steve Weberg. I'm with the Public Affairs staff of the Kansas City Public Library, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're coming to you from the Genevieve Goldner Gallery on the first floor of our downtown Central Library, backdropped by the very interesting and compelling artwork of Armin Newsom. Uh, his exhibit, Dissident Formalisms, is on display here through the end of January, and we're privileged to have Armin with us tonight to talk about his works and his creative process. Armin has taught at Northwest Missouri State University in Maryville, about an hour and a half north of here, for the past 21 years. And he's been a professor of painting there since 2013. He keeps a studio in the West Bottoms in Kansas City, and his work has been featured in venues across the country. He has another exhibit on display right now, in fact, at the uh, Clayton Staples Gallery at Wichita State University. And he's part of a, a two-person exhibit that's currently at, a, uh, storefront, at the storefront anteroom in Corsicana, Texas, uh, not too far from Dallas. Internationally, his work has been displayed in Munich, in Paris, in Budapest, and in multiple venues in Romania. Armin's a, a native of Romania. Uh, uh, from Cluj, Napica, a city of a little more than 300,000 people, about the size of St. Louis in the northwestern part of the country. His family moved to Munich when he was young, and it was there that he earned a degree in illustration. Uh, before moving to the United States in the mid-1990s to do graduate work, and he came away from Montana State University with a Master of Fine Arts degree. We're fortunate that he landed at Northwest Missouri State and here in Kansas City. Uh, before I turn it over to Armin, um, uh, if you have a question for him over the course of our discussion, uh, I want to invite you to submit it via our YouTube uh, chat box, and we'll get as many of those questions answered as we can at the end of the presentation. Armin, I, I took an opportunity earlier today to walk through your exhibit here again, and again, I just enjoyed it immensely. It's just so great to have you here. Thank you for joining us tonight, and welcome to the Kansas City Public Library. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. COVID. Thank you, Steve, for the kind introduction. Um, and also for your assistance throughout this project. I should also thank Anducy, the director of exhibitions here at the Kansas City Public Library, for her assistance and uh, her patience with me. Uh, she uh, is close to retirement, and I'm afraid that uh, I might have made the last parts of her tenure here um, a little more taxing than uh, she would have liked so and if you're listening to this I hope uh, you can forgive me I want to start the the presentation with a note about the title dissident formalisms um, obviously the word dissident has political implications and I, I use that term both uh, tongue-in-cheek, but it also refers to some real historical events that I'm thinking about a lot when I make art. I, I, I am very interested in history, and the, 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 the way humans uh, comport themselves in their affairs and the way they interact with each other is of great interest to me, and because not only as a, as a citizen of a society, but also as an artist, because whatever humans do in history also has uh, its implications in, in how art uh, of any given period in time is, is made. And the, the way I use dissident in, in that sense is, is in combination with the word formalism, because it refers to the, these major events in the 20th century where, where um, there were these, these great battles, ideological battles, between, between how a society should organize itself either as a, as a free market-driven capitalist society or as a, as a communist society. 
and and in the same vein, th there were there were uh, throughout that century there were artists who took a stance uh, and 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 did did things in their art um, that 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 almost mirrored the, the ideological battles that were fought out in politics, uh, in art. Uh, one of which was uh, formalism. The w one of the great disagreements in 20th century art was whether um, art should have the same kind of narrative component that it had had uh, ever since its inception thousands of years ago, or uh, as other proponents, um, mostly leaning to the left, who, who, were, who were obsessed with creating a new society through art, um, thought that, that, that art, um, just like the, 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 the major upheavals at the start of the 20th century, uh, our art should play a role in the reorganization of society. Uh, and, and then um, all that narrative content that, that the art of the past had uh, would be obsolete, and and there, there's these these schools of artists, uh, among chief among them constructivists, uh, who believe that that all that an artwork needs is um, the interplay between shapes and colors, and and any kind of narrative content would be simply baggage, and and so the the whole the the whole title that I chose for this show. Uh, refers to the the history of ideas, both in politics and in in art. Um, at the same time, uh, it is tongue in cheek because these battles um, are over, and and they they do not uh, they they actually do not have any any bearing on the making of art uh, anywhere in the world. And and so the the reason I chose this title also is because of. Um, this book here, the, the wha what you see on the screen is, is the, the cover um, of a book that my parents brought back to me to Munich uh, as I was still living in, in Germany. They had gone to Czechoslovakia, to Prague and the environs um, right after the Iron Curtain fell. And they brought me back this book on, on French Impressionism. Um, and and it was, of course, written in Czech. Um, it was. It had still been printed in uh, the in a communist economy, so the paper quality was poor. The reproductions were were certainly not up to the standards of the of the West with it with its much more advanced printing technologies, and and so it it, it sat on my on my shelf in Munich uh, for a long, long time. Uh, in the meantime, I emigrated to, to the United States, but on one of my um, visits back in Germany to visit my parents, uh, the I flipped through the book uh, out of sheer nostalgia and then conceived of the idea that I would use this book, since I couldn't read it anyway, I, w I would use this book as a found object. Um, and I would paint onto the pages of, of this book. and, and the majority of the works in this exhibit here at the Kansas City Public Library are these paintings uh, executed on, on, uh, on, on individual pa pages of the book, uh, which I um, ripped out, cut out, and then reacted to whatever was on these pages of the book. And, and, and I very decidedly um, took a, a, a formalist stance in reacting to uh, the Impressionists, to, to that major revolutionary art form um, uh, of France and then eventually of, the, of the, whole, uh, the whole of Europe and the whole of the Western world. Um, but but I, I reacted to these book pages as if I was a formalist, as if I was a constructivist, which in fact I had just then become. So we're talking works from uh, starting from about 2016-17. Um, so now let me let me walk you through some of the the examples of this show. As as you can see in the uh, in the the slide accompanying this, there's this one there's this one book page uh, 
over which I painted um, with, with just uh, bands of color, uh, as a formalist would, um, it, it, is, it is over a, a reproduction of a, a pastel by Degas, Edgar Degas, the, um, the Impressionist and also not Impressionist because he was in fact um, a, a, a near classicist, uh, but he, he hung out with the Impressionists and was a role model for them. Um, and, and, and he did influence uh, Impressionism a great deal. S and, and his signature works are, of course, the, the, the ballet dancers, uh, heavy romantic content. Um, and so I, I'm in, in all of these works that, that I painted over, uh, I left illusions, I left traces of the, um, of the original Impressionist work standing. To the to, to, to on the other side of this exhibited work, um, as you can see in the PowerPoint, is is another um, another work that that I did. It's now in a private collection, uh, but this is how I would treat these these pages. And and in that example, the the sketch of a jockey, um, the guy loved horse racing just as he loved ballet, um, is left largely standing. Um, but I, I subjected to the treatment of, um, well, a, a constructivist, formalist approach to shape and color rather than having narrative content. Much the same can be said about the approach I took uh, for, for this group of, of works. Uh, they are from the back of the book. Where, where the individual biographies of the artists uh, were listed. Uh, and I chose to leave the, the, the name standing in, in homage to these artists. Um, uh, my, my painting over their works should not be misconstrued as uh, any kind of disrespect. Uh, they are some of the greatest painters they ever, that ever lived. Um, but again, I am, uh, I, I am using in a, in, in a reverent but also irreverent way, the way a, um, a, a 20th century artist would treat the art of the past, namely as a found object. So, so conceptually speaking, I'm not only using the actual book as a found object, but also the work and the ideas of these artists uh, as a found object. Uh, and, and that's in fact how how I and, uh, and a great deal of, of artists treat art history, um, it, it, is, it is almost like a, uh, almost like a mine, a, a mine in the, uh, in the ground where you go digging for, um, for the gold that, that you will use for your current practice. And, and, and so these, these color fields uh, allude to what a, a formalist, let's say, of the of the of a color field painter of the mid 20th century um, would 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 have uh, his or her canvases look like except that again in this in this case it is um, it is painted on top of uh, paper but the other thing that is significant uh, about my works in this in this exhibition is that my paintings look as if they were collaged. Uh, co collage for me is an incredibly important uh, way to generate ideas and to, to invigorate my, my practice. Um, and in fact, all of the works and my whole aesthetic that is, that is um, represented by this show was born out of the collage. The, 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 next, the next piece I would like to, to talk about uh, is the single painting here, and when I call it a painting, um, it is actually uh, not quite as what it seems because this is in fact a true collage, and and it is the result of uh, uh, a great deal of of collaging I did during a time when I actually stopped painting. Uh, for about a year or so, I did not paint at all, even though I had painted before for nearly 20 years. Um, but I stopped painting because I wanted to, to change my, my aesthetic. And so the, 
the collage is the perfect vehicle to to disrupt one's one's um, habits as an artist and to bring about new shapes, new colors, uh, new ways of organizing the picture plane. Uh, so this piece is is just um, cut out sheets of paper that I arrange according to um, to sketches, but also more than sketches, as it turned out. So what you see on the uh, on the screen in, uh, in in the in the PowerPoint that's simultaneously projected here is um, a, a double spread of, of of the book of collages I did uh, back in 2016, and from which my whole aesthetic, my whole current aesthetic, uh, sprung. Um, when we go over um, to, to this next piece, which is actually both in the, in, in the exhibit and, uh, um, and, and the PowerPoint, um, th th this, is, this is the result of, of the collaging. So, so the, 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 the what, what, I, what I cut out of pieces of paper then became paintings and, and so the, the, the kind of structure that, that, that you could see in the previous example, so on the, on the right side of the double spread of the, of the collage book, then led to, to this approach of, of um, subdividing the, the picture plane through this constructive scaffolding of, of black lines that were then combined with, with shapes of color the shapes of color are, are influenced by architecture. I, I am very interested in architecture, and, and my, whole, my whole life I have been using architecture as a stand-in for humanity at large, but also for humanity's ideas in every, any given historical period, because architecture is, after all, just a a subcategory of the total artistic production of a society. And so whatever, whatever buildings um, humanity has brought forth is mirroring the mindsets, the consciousness of that certain culture that, that produces this architecture. And, and for me, the, the architecture of, the, of world history uh, stands, is a stand-in for the history of ideas. Um, and, and history is, in fact, so important to me. Um, the history of architecture, I should say, is, in fact, so important to me um, that it, it finds its, its application in a work that uh, I did about two years ago where I had the chance to, to do the painting that I, that I had been doing uh, directly on the walls of an architectural space. Uh, so the, the, the model that I also chose to exhibit in, in this show is of the, the Goethe pop-up here in Kansas City on Main Street. It's still, it's still functioning. It still has an active um, exhibition program uh, about roughly about two years ago. Uh, we were given the chance, and when I say we, um, I did this in collaboration with Caleb Taylor, who uh, is a studio mate of mine in the West Bottoms. And so we were, uh, we were given the opportunity to paint directly on the walls of the, the space of the Goethe pop-up in that uh, 100 uh, centenary of the, the Bauhaus, the, 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 the famous uh, German, uh, German formalist constructivist art school that, that lasted for about uh, 12, 13 years until from 1919. So 2019 uh, was the 100 year anniversary of the Bauhaus. And the Bauhaus itself lasted for uh, until 1933 when, when the Nazis uh, closed it down for exactly that. Um, going back to what I said in my introductory remarks, um, the Nazis believed that art had to have a content. It had to serve propagandistic um, uh, ends. And so the, f the formalist approach of the Bauhaus was uh, a thorn in the side of the German state at that time. 
and that's why uh, it got shot down and it got shot down shut down by um, the by launching the accusation to the school that they were leftists that they were cultural Bolsheviks as the uh, as the saying went um, and and all of these all of the teachers and, and a lot of the students, if they could make their way out of Germany, ended up uh, in America. And in fact, the Bauhaus curriculum is still the curriculum that most uh, art programs in the United States follow. Um, finally, as we make our way back to the, the start of the exhibition, I would like to talk about this one piece that is on the right of both the, the, the PowerPoint image, but also the, um, the, 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 the screen that you are all watching. Uh, and that is, again, on the one side, a, a double spread from, from that book of collages that launched my present aesthetic. And then on the right of it is a large format um, painting that looks like a collage. So, so the, the, the parallelogram shape um, that, that, that looks as if it's just very, very precariously held up by, by, by the, the yellow upright um, is a piece of paper originally in, in, the, in the collage in the book. But then in the, in the work on paper that is, that is in the show, this looks as if it is collaged, but it is painted, in fact. So the, the, the pattern of the, the envelope that, that I'm sure all of you are recognizing is in rather painstaking fashion reproduced through paint. And, and this, is, this is what led then to my, my work that I'm doing currently in painting, um, um, I, I suppose you, you can see the, the, the progression from uh, the collaging and the, the work on paper to these canvases where I, I use the shapes that are formerly cut out. They have now become shapes that, that are almost self-generating. I, I, I do not collage anymore. I haven't collaged in a while, in fact. Um, but, but the collage, this, this 20th century technique that was invented uh, 110 years roughly ago is still something that, without which, in fact, art was, would not be thinkable in, in, in the present way that it's done um, because it, it truly represents a, a change in consciousness. Be before Picasso and Brack um, started collaging, the picture plane of at least Western art was continuous. Th there was no interruption uh, in the frame of vision. Yet, born out of Cubism, the collage then became this, this, um, this, this perfect emblem of the modern consciousness, of modernity itself. Because in, in the time since then, our, our lives, human affairs, the world has been, um, is, 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 is one of, of, of disruption, of, um, of multiple ideas competing with each other, of uh, no, no certainty, of discontinuity. And, and this, this shift in consciousness is something that, that interests me as an artist, but also uh, as a citizen. Because, because whatever happened roughly 110, uh, 120 years ago in, in the history of human consciousness is still with us. And, and we are still grappling with the world that was, that was formed in 1910, 1915. Um, the, the First World War happened um, as a result of, of these changes in consciousness that were brought about by both science and by the loss of a, the loss of, of a coherent religion, of spirituality, 
um, the loss of a center, to, to put it in, in, to put it to the point where, where um, at least European Western society uh, was breaking, breaking apart and we are still living under um, the effects of, of, of that development, of that event. Armin, thank you so much. Uh, once again, I would invite um, anyone who has a question for Armin, just submit the question to the uh, YouTube uh, chat box there and we'll get to your questions. I, we, we have it initially, uh, a comment that you'll probably appreciate uh, just from a, an audience member. The, the exhibit design somehow creates a peaceful and exciting energy. I felt inspired walking through the space. Um, so, you touched someone there, certainly. Um, audience question here, um, how can art reflect what's happening in society without narrative content? I, I, I am, I would have given a different answer a few years ago, but um, I, I have actually come to the conclusion um, that that either either one as an artist has to choose to have an, a narrative content, um, or if if there is no if, if if it's just about shapes and colors, if it is if it is formalism. Um, then I, I, I do not think the work of art can have any, any influence on society. Uh, another audience question. You said that after 20 years you decided to stop painting and try collage. Now that you, you, uh, you're also done working in collage, what's next? And are these changes you make caused by life events? Well. It, I, I, I was intentionally vague about uh, about ab about these developments in in my in my practice. I I, I have always collaged uh, from from very early age on, and I go back to collage if necessary. Um, in fact, I, I just resolved one composition in my studio today by collaging onto a painting. And I may or may not paint that element in, or I may just leave the collaged paper cut out and leave it right there. Um, so so the, 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 the I, I, do not, I do not move from, from, from collaging to painting uh, and then to collaging or anything else. Um, it, it is a flow. I, I, ha I, have, I have these techniques at my, at my disposal and I use them um, to solve problems in the studio. Uh, that there is, I, I am not, I'm not bound by, by, by any kind of temporal restriction on when to use what. Is there a technique that's intriguing you, that's tempting you at this point that you are yet to try, but might? No, no. I, I, in the studio, any development is organic. If, if, a, if something suggests itself, uh, then, then it will be implemented. Uh, an artist is a problem solver. If, if, if a certain compositional or even even conceptual problem calls for a new technique, a new material, then that's what an artist will do. I want to go back to the gift of the book from your parents, um, which this all emanated from, uh, which seems to make the library a fitting <laughs> a fitting place for for this exhibit. And I was curious as to you know how you feel about the. Uh, the library as a venue for uh, for art exhibits and for art does it reach different audiences? Does it expand the audience? 
I would definitely say so, yes. The, the library is, is one of the cornerstones of, uh, of a civic society. And, and because it is open to everyone, pe people, might, people might not come to the library to look at art, but in finding art in the library, they may be, they may be exposed to something that they otherwise would not seek out, or, or maybe they would, be, they, they would be reluctant to go into a museum even, or, or, or a private uh, commercial gallery because the, the threshold might be too intimidating to cross. And so the library is, is, is arguably expanding the audience for any artist. I'm going to ask you a complicated question. A long answer is fine. Uh, we talked uh, some time back for a, uh, uh, an article for Casey Studio Magazine, and, and I was really interested uh, in, in your take on modernism, and you called it a, quote, failed ideal. Uh, can you explain that? Well, m m modernism, m modernism is, is, um, is, 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 a, is a secular form of the, of the messianic, um, the messianic uh, impetus of of Christianity, and 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 so the in in the same way that the Christian the Christian credo um, is founded on the idea that that eventually a new world will be made by the by, by the return of of the Godhead, um, so so. Ideologically speaking, modernism is born out of the uh, uh, out of the, the conviction that um, the, the the liberation the liberation of the human mind from all ideology and religion will actually then lead to a better world. The the, the whole idea of of a revolution. Um, whether it's the French Revolution or the or the, the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, uh, and and that is only the one that succeeded, but many other revolutions were attempted in Europe uh, at the turn of the, or the at the beginning of the 20th century. In fact, also in in um, in Germany, in, in several places, um, these 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 communist socialist revolutions were attempted uh, in order to, to give the power to every individual to conduct their affairs um, as liberated from either clerical or monarchical authorities. Um, and, and the artists of, of the, the first half of the 20th century um, were invested and, and were, were, were likewise inspired by this idea, the, the, the constructivists in Russia, um, at least until Stalin shut them, shut them down, um, believed that, um, that through their contributions, um, through the arranging of shapes and colors, and abstract ones at that, non-narrative ones, uh, they were helping build a new society, a new world, because they believed that these shapes and colors and the way they were arranged, they could actually bring about a change in consciousness of every human being. Um, and that's why I call modernism, it, modernism is a utopia. It's a utopian, it's a utopian idea, um, but it failed. It, it, it did not bring about what what its its um, propagandists its um, its practitioners uh, wanted it to do, whether that was in in the visual arts, whether that was in music, uh, you name it. It it simply um, failed as a it failed as an ideology as an idea, and became another ism. It eventually was co-opted by market capitalism. 
Is that, do you think that's a widely held perspective? Yes. I am, I am not making this up. <laughs> no, I wasn't accusing you of making it up. And um, I just didn't know if, you know, as we look back on, and as artists today, you know, look back on modernism and have now have a chance to put it in the context of artistic history, if, you know, that is a commonly held thought. Well, it's, it's like any other ism. It's like postmodernism. Postmodernism followed modernism. Um, when I was young, everybody talked postmodernism and deconstruction and post-structuralism and, and all those French theory, et cetera, et cetera. But now it is, it is, it is just a footnote in, in the ongoing history of ideas. It's, it, it does not, postmodernism was thought also to have revolutionary power. Um, but it doesn't. Armin, this has been fascinating. Um, you know, again, I, it's a, just a wonderful exhibit. And uh, as the questioner, you know, said at the outset here, you know, you really reached her. Ex actually, I mentioned that I was going through the um, exhibit here earlier today, just kind of reminding myself of, of how nice it is. And there was another gentleman in here who was taking it in and enjoying it. He was enjoying the architectural aspect of it. Uh, he apparently had some uh, architecture in his background. So, uh, I, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. The uh, exhibit, again, is Dissident Formalisms, and it's on display here in the Goldner, Ga Goldner Gallery at the Central Library through January 30th. We really would invite you to drop by and see it, you know, if you're in the library uh, checking out a book or uh, working on a computer or, you know, want to make a side trip, a worthwhile side trip, we invite you to stop by. And also to our, our, our other gallery on the mezzanine level of the library, the uh, Rocky and Gabriella Mountain uh, Gallery, where uh, we have a, a collection of rare photographs of the famed ph uh, painter Thomas Hart Benton at work in his studio, in his home, uh, photographs that have never been seen prior to this exhibit uh, that were taken in 1955 by Kansas City photographer Thomas Mardikes. And again, that's in, uh, on display in, uh, in the Mountain Gallery here at the library. Armin, thank you so much again tonight, and thank all of you for joining us.